Welcome back to another episode of A Mission Focused Life. My name is Tim Olofsson. I'm the Executive Director of Another Child Foundation and the host of the Mission Focused Life podcast. And today I have a special guest, Pastor Jeff Phipps. He is the pastor here at uh, Cumberland Fellowship here in Crossville, Tennessee. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Hey, I, I'm glad to be here. I'm the missions pastor. Missions I won't pastor. claim to be the senior pastor. That guy, he's got too much going on. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so the missions pastor, yeah. and that's kind of what we're talking about here, yep. is missions and how uh, we look at missions and how we uh, really think of missions is not something we put on our calendar and do, but missions is really, uh, it's a lifestyle. Uh, so today we're going to be jumping into uh, scripture and we're going to be going to uh, John chapter 15 uh, verses five through eight, we're gonna be talking about the vine and the branches, as well as going back to John 13, and where Jesus washes the disciples' feet, which I think is probably the best example of servanthood in all the Bible. So we're gonna be uh, covering those two topics today during today's episode. Um, so Jeff, when I uh, brought up to you um, the vine and the branches, and you thought verses five through eight were a good starting point, so. Give me your thoughts on what do you think um, he's telling us in those verses? Well, I, I think it's very important to recognize that that we have a purpose. Like we have a purpose to live, to to be to be the the example of Christ on earth. Like I have to be the reflection of Christ if I'm a Christ follower. Like I have a mandate. I'm called to show people Jesus. I'm called to, to share the gospel but to do that I have to be within his will and doing the things that he's called me to do I got to be determined to do it I think I think that Jesus lays this out here pretty good it's like like I'm the vine I'm the main thing and you are, you are a part of me you're a branch to me that means I have to be tapped into you like if I, I think about like a like a poison ivy going going up a tree and you have you have the main vine but then you have these little branches coming off of it well it, you can cut off them little branches and the vine keeps right on going but if mm -hmm. you cut that vine at their very bottom everything dies it's and so jesus uses that analogy uh to show that we can't do it apart from him like i have to be tapped into his power who he is to accomplish the purpose for my life yeah. um i can't do it on my own but he's given us a big purpose right uh, the big purpose of sharing the gospel, the Great Commission. Go out and share share Jesus with all the world. Make disciples of all nations. So, um, and it's a lot. It's a big deal. But it's it's so so cool to think like he's going to give us the ability to do it. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about this morning. A bunch of us talked about Acts one eight. And the fact that that Jesus is telling the disciples like go and wait in Jerusalem and the Holy Spirit will come on you. And when you come, when it comes on you, you will receive it and you'll be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to have the ability and the power to do the thing that Christ has called you to do till you receive it from him because you can't do it on your own. Yeah. And here Jesus has laid out that whole idea before we even get there with, with yeah. where we're at next. But here he's laying out that idea that in me you have that strength, that power, the ability to do the thing I've called you to do. Yeah. So as you were talking there, what I, what really drew to my attention was the fact that you said, since we're attached to the vine, we're going to receive the nutrition, I guess, from from the vine. I mean, we're, yeah. we're the branches, so we're going to receive this. So Because we all attach ourselves to something. And as Christians, we all hope that we're trying to do the right thing in the world. But if we're not truly attached and in true relationship with with who God is and who Jesus was for us, uh, then we're not going to get the proper nutrition. We might be somewhat healthy, but we're not going to be totally um, being fed by who God is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what, when you said that, I think that's what we need to really be thinking about is how by being attached to that vine, he's going to give us all the great things that, that we need to grow and ultimately to produce fruit because he wants us to grow because that's what our relationship is designed to do is to grow closer to him but ultimately what he wants us to do is to go out and to produce fruit mm -hmm. we don't produce the food he produces the fruit uh, but it's because of our obedience to him uh, that's what will produce the fruit mm -hmm. so in the book the abiding cycle we talk a lot about the abiding cycle uh, book and it's really basically a book that describes uh, our relationship with christ and how we need to seek god's will 
how to obey God's will, and then how to grow in this uh, relationship and to get to know God more and more intimately and then repeat that cycle. So as we keep repeating the cycle of obedience, our faith will grow and we become stronger and ultimately uh, closer to Christ. Um, so I think that's what, what we're trying to do is trying to understand how we can do all of that. Mm -hmm. so. Through experience in Him. Every, every time that you do something, I'm, th you know, going through the abiding cycle, reading, reading what that says and, and thinking about, uh, um, Henry Blackaby's, the experience in God, it's a, the same idea of, of it's like, man, God wants to do a thing in you, but you have to step out in obedience and faith to do a thing that you might be pretty uncomfortable with, yeah. but that's the point so that he can show up in your weakness and show, show who he is. And then when he shows up and you accomplish whatever it is he wants to do through you, then you have seen it, it builds your faith, and it helps you to move on to the, the next thing because God's always going to up the ante on you. He's always going to kind of put you in, in the next thing. Once you get comfortable with one thing, he's going to give you the next thing. Um, and that's at least that's been my experience. Mm -hmm. And and thinking about that with the abiding cycle and, and experience God, Black Beast thing, is is. It's so true. And I could tell you from my life, it's like, man, I just see God show up over and over in these situations. I see it always gives me a bigger step to take, but it's because I'm tapped into that vine. Yeah. I'm getting that nutrition. I'm, I'm, I'm reading his word. I'm not, I'm not just um, listening to somebody tell it to me on Sunday. Yeah. It's like, I, I, you have to be in a, in a relationship with Christ on your own. Otherwise, you're not going to receive the power or the ability to recognize the divine appointments he's put in front of you. Mm -hmm. He's not going to give you the word. I mean, Jesus said, don't worry about what you're going to say till the hour that you are questioned. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will give you what to say. Like if you're not tapped into the vine, yeah. when those situations happen, you're going to miss it. You're not going to be ready to, to deliver the purpose that Christ has for us. Mm -hmm. And I think it's I, I think it's so important, and I would encourage people. It's like, man, check out the abiding cycle. Go and look at at least go and look at that whole idea how it's tied into the the true vine. Yeah. Um, that so we can understand how to walk the walk that we need to walk. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest things I've learned in my uh, maturity or growing in my my faith walk was over the last five years is not just reading the Bible for information. Mm -hmm. I did that for years. I just read and I learned the stories and I, I learned and I, but I really wasn't tapping into all the goodness that he has when I, so now I take smaller bits of scripture and really try to absorb that, that nutrition that we're talking about, and then let the spirit talk to me, talk to me through that, the scripture in which he has me read. Um, so I think that's, it's very important that as we remain as it says here in uh, verse 7, If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Mm -hmm. um, so going to the great disciple, or the great commission, um, I love that. So as we go and make disciples, um, the great commission doesn't say go and visit. Go on a mission trip and visit a child or a person that says go and make disciples mm -hmm. and so we need to know how to make disciples and uh, I think that's all just by being connected and having this continuous uh, relationship with who God is and what he's calling us to do well I mean think about making disciples that's uh, that gets lost I think with people so easily they don't really they don't really like what does that really mean for me to be a disciple it's like to be a disciple is to be to be a dedicated learner from someone, right? So whether or not guys way back in Old Testament time would follow a rabbi, um, that would they'd be their disciple, just like John the Baptist had mm -hmm. had disciples. Like Andrew was one of John's disciples that mm -hmm. ends up following Jesus. Um, for us to be a disciple of Christ means I'm a, I'm a learner of Christ. I'm dedicated learner, a follower of Christ, that I'm going to, to seek him and read his word and trust what he says and mm -hmm. then obey it and what he says to go do a thing is to do it i think i think we can naturally learn what we're supposed to do to be that disciple and how to share what we've learned with somebody through our relationship with christ um but there's a, also an importance with doing things together mm -hmm. as as a team whether it's a mission team 
or a small group to really learn together and learn to disciple together and learn a process so that you can teach what you've learned to somebody. I mean, Jesus says to teach them everything I've commanded you, right? Teach yeah. them everything I've, well, that's what, all we're supposed to do. We're called to, to share our testimony, right? Mm-hmm. To be the witness. That's just telling people, well, this is what God's done in my life. Yeah. And let me tell you what I've learned about him mm-hmm. as I have studied him, mm-hmm. studied, because uh, when I read the Bible, I'm literally studying Jesus because he's the word, right? right? The word became flesh to dwell among us. Mm-hmm. So whenever I read the Bible, I'm, I'm learning straight from Jesus. And if I'm willing to take account for that and, and make it personal, and what's he trying to tell me? I can share that with you. I can share that with anybody at home. I can, whoever I run into, whether it's somebody in Romania or Costa Rica, anywhere that we go, I can share who Jesus is to yeah. me and what his, what his commands are and, and how he can change our life, you know, outside of just the idea of salvation. It's like, but Jesus wants us to, to live a fulfilled life. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, anyway, I, I think one of the key things in mission trips that we need to think about is, uh, is our testimonies. I think our testimonies are so very important in mission trips because a lot of times you're going to reach underserved, at least to the underserved children as well, who we typically serve. And uh, I think they don't want to be preached at. They need to hear the truth, but I think they hear the truth through our stories. I think that is so much more relational. So I think in mission trips, having a testimony prepared for the audience and what you are going to be speaking to, whether it's adults or children, you need to have that tailored testimony because people get inspired by uh, how God has worked through other people's lives. So we are going to take a little bit of a turn and we're going to go back to John 13 where uh, it's a Monday Thursday and Jesus is (laughs) getting prepared to um, have the Last Supper and he decides... He is going to show uh, his disciples how to serve. And he decides he's going to wash their feet. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I'm always um, come to Simon Peter, uh, who says, you know, you can wash my feet, wash everything. Wash, um, he says, no, Peter said, you shall never wash my feet. But he says, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Peter said, not just my feet, mm-hmm. but my hands and head as well. Um, but I, I love the, I think this is the, the best, for me, it's the most inspirational uh, way in which we see Jesus serving his people. These are the people he was closest to. I mean, have you ever had a teacher in your school serve you in that way? No, it's for him as a teacher to, to serve his students was a pretty amazing act of servanthood. It's such humbleness. And I think, I think people miss, miss the idea here of to be a true servant of Christ, what that means. I mean, the, the reality is when, when God elevates you, he's, he's, he's bringing you down a notch. I, I'm, every time he elevates you, it seems like he's, you're just learning to serve people even more. I mean, you take, I mean, a lot of people might think that this, that a senior pastor has it all together and he's mm-hmm. doing preaching and, and he's, he's just telling everybody what they should do. And that's the end of it. No, that's not. It's, he is, he is stuck leading and serving and coming down to the same level as everybody else. Um, and that's what it means to truly follow is to be that servant. Jesus, Jesus exemplifies that in such a huge way. I mean, at, at this time, they would they would have people that would be ready some some young person or somebody that just uh, needed the money whatever it was that that would wash people's feet coming into certain situations okay. it was it was a customary to to clean their feet because you're walking through the streets and the mud yeah. and the dung and your sandals <laughs> so you got dirty feet so it was customary to always get their feet washed well Jesus picks a spot has a place set up hey go set up this guy will let you set up food here go you'll find this just go get everything together so the the guys go and do it and yeah sure enough they find a spot but what's missing Jesus has this planned out like mm-hmm. the servant that's supposed to wash her feet isn't there because he knew he was going to give this example he purposefully done that so he could yeah. exemplify to us man you got to step down off of whatever seat or stool or bench or stool you think you're on and step down to yeah. other people's level. It's yeah. like, I always think about Acts 
in Acts when Peter and John are going to the temple and they, there's the lame guy there by the gate called Beautiful. Um, the guys there have been begging for money. He's always begging for money, always begging for money. And they come up to him and they 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 stop because he's asked them for money. But this guy's not even looking at them in the eyes. This guy's, yeah. he he's worthless to mm-hmm. everybody. So nobody wants to look at him. So he probably just don't even look at them. But Peter and John stop and they look at the guy and they begin a conversation with him. And so they make him look at them, but they get down to his level. It's like, you know, yeah. I envision them getting down on the ground with this, with this guy's like, and talking to him. It's like silver or gold we ain't got, but what we do have mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. But I, I see that in, in, in serving people, you've got to get down to their level, get one-on-one with them and you, whatever their situation is, I've got to be willing to get my hands dirty yeah. with them. I got to be willing to, to whatever it is, stand on a street corner. This is an experience for me is stand yeah. on a street corner and, and love on a, a trans prostitute, something that was new to me a year ago that I've got to do a couple of times. It's, it, it, it's, it's huge, but I mean, we're called to love people. Yeah. And, he gave me that opportunity. It's like, man, I got to stop and say, no, I'm going to go to the same level of anybody I run into and love them. And Jesus did that. It's like, yeah. man, look, I'll step down to the lowest of the low servant position and wash your feet because I want you to do the same thing. Yeah. I think when you were talking about uh, that and when, who was it that went, was it John and Peter? We're going into the Gate of, gate of Beautiful. And, uh, but I like what they said. A lot of people, I think when, they're talking about missions. They they're not quite sure what they have to offer, and you know, gold and silver we do not have. Mm-hmm. But they said in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. I mean, that is what we offer. That's what we have. So it doesn't. It's not of intrinsical value, but it does have a huge, eternal value uh, to people. So a lot of times people. Um, or not quite sure how to get involved in missions. I, I don't. I don't have the skill set. I know I thought that when I wanted my first international trip. I was 44 years old. I thought, and I felt called to go and serve children. But it's like, what do I have to offer, really? And uh, but it was my faith. It was that testimony of of what he did for me. And that I just shared that with kids. And it was uncomfortable for me at times. But I knew that's what I that's what I had to offer because I didn't have, you know. The, the skill sets that other people have as far as doing music and things like that. But it's like, what can I contribute to him to a mission? But he used me um, because I was connected to the vine and, and I knew what he was, uh, he had given me to strengthen me with uh, to offer. So it was uncomfortable and it was new for me, but um, that's what I offered. So any of our viewers, listeners that feel like, I don't know what I can do to, to serve in the mission field, humble yourself and just trust and trust God and, and, and just go and do it. Oh, well, yeah. Your, te- mm-hmm. your testimony. It's by the word of your testimony that people will come to believe. Yeah. I, I can throw the Bible at them all day long, mm-hmm. but if they don't know it, then it, it's not going to make an impact. What, right. the, what does make an impact? Oh, my story. Yeah. What, what God's done in me. That's, mm-hmm. that's what's going to make the impact. How, why do you believe in Jesus? Because I read it in this book? No, mm-hmm. because I can tell you where he showed up in my life. Yeah. And knowing my testimony, and it's a it's a living thing. It's it's constant, right? It's mm-hmm. like I could write my testimony like, a, you know, write your testimony to go on a mission trip. Maybe you've done that, maybe yeah. you've not. Mm-hmm. But I know we do that with our trips here. It's like, hey, write your testimony. But I'm all the time telling people, remember, this is always changing. Always write down what God's got because you might deal with somebody yeah. and share with them how I got saved. Or you might deal with somebody and share with them how I got over an addiction. Or I might share with this person um, how I got over a father issue that I had. Whatever the thing is, it's like ammo in your pocket. You need to be ready to share. And you need to know it. Not that it needs to be some rehearsed thing like I've got it scripted and I don't know what I'm going to say. But if it's written on my heart, then it's going to be readily available to share with somebody. Yeah. Yeah, I just remember that first mission trip where I went and I got to share my testimony. That, That was... I had it scripted out, and uh, it, the first time I did it, it just didn't come off. It, would just, it wasn't as authentic as it as it needed to be because I I was thinking too much. Teresa, my wife, would say, "Just speak from your heart," and it's like, "No, I, it's a, here on paper. I can't speak from my heart because I'm always afraid, and I still am, and I I tend to ramble on at times." But um, 
because my mind always goes faster than my my mouth does and uh but yeah so having that testimony in your heart i think is a good thing and then you can you can uh adapt it to whoever audience you're at so mm -hmm. if you're sitting at a bus stop and a homeless guy sits next to you you know you can share his testimony with that or if you're in a lawyer's office you can you know talk to them too so um yeah so it's a pretty pretty cool thing about the testimony i think it's just don't be scared to strike up a conversation with somebody mm -hmm. it's not like it's got to be a scripted thing that you got to have all the answers yeah. or i don't need to know all the bible i just like hey how are you what's your name mm -hmm. oh okay what do you do well this is what i do you know and then I, maybe you get the opportunity to share mm -hmm. like man i'm in a you ever go to church? Do you you know Jesus? I mean, mm -hmm. what, however the conversation gets you there, where you get your yeah. opportunities, like, you know what, God did this thing in my life, and get to share that with somebody. You just never know. Yeah. And you never know who's going to be listening to that same story That's when true. you're talking to somebody. So, mm -hmm. so important. Uh, so, as we wrap up this uh, episode of Mission Focused Life, uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit right at the end here about the actual practice of actually washing people's feet <laughs> and children's feet, and that's what we do on our mission trips when we go to Romania. You know, we'll, we'll serve over 500 children, typically on one of our mission trips, and we're putting shoes on the feet of, uh, feet of children. And I know Pastor Jeff was there last year. So Jeff, what can you share a little bit about what you saw and experienced last year? Oh, I know, um, well, one, I just have to tell you all, it was, it, it was wonderful getting to go, getting to go to Romania and, and work with these children, uh, these underserved children that really had a need and getting to, to be a part of bringing shoes, like doing part of a shoe drive here and knowing that, Hey, we've done a drive with the church, show up here and get to, to put shoes on kids' feet. But I mean, you're going to kids that, that don't have the ability, um, that are looked down upon, um, so that they can't have all that they need. So they come in and you get to pull out a, a couple pairs of shoes and they're like, ooh, ooh, I want that one. And you got to be careful because they'll end up arguing over them. But then you get to bring a shoe out there. But I mean, they're excited. They've got these old wore out shoes, holes. I mean, several of them I saw toes sticking through. Um, but you get to give them a brand new pair of shoes and they are so excited and they're so proud of those shoes and showing them off to each other afterwards after you get the opportunity actually put them on their feet it's like almost literal washing jesus washing the disciples feet you're sitting at the feet of these children and trying shoes on them putting them on them tying them up and you're good to go little johnny there you go but watching their face and seeing them so excited for a pair of shoes and then knowing like we're getting the opportunity to serve them and love them. Just like Jesus would serve yeah. people, feed them, whatever the thing was to get the opportunity to, to share with them. It's like, well, mm -hmm. we're giving them shoes, but we got to share the gospel. We got to talk about scripture. We got to pray with people. You know, we we were acting out. What was it? We did it. Daniel and the lion's den. Well, act, oh, mm -hmm. man, I acted that out over and over and over and over <laughs> in all these places with an interpreter. And finally, one of the teen interpreters, I think he just started doing the story on his own. I, I don't know, he had to get used to me because I was just like all over the place. But, uh, man, I don't know. It was, it was a lot of fun getting to serve those children and seeing like y'all's program and, and what you're supporting there and knowing that the heart behind it and so the heart behind everything else that you do it's like I've not been to Guatemala with you but I there's no doubt in my mind you guys are doing the thing that God's called you to do there in mm -hmm. all these different locations yeah. I'd encourage people to check them out um, we do we had a blast with Romania and look forward to continuing that yeah yeah, so shoes, shoes are an important part of our ministry as we continue to reach out to children. But they are simply a tool to get the gospel into the hearts of these children. And uh, that act of service is probably one of the most powerful uh, times I've ever had on a mission trip, is sitting with a child in front of you, sharing the gospel with them, giving them a pair of shoes, watching them smile. Um, it's, it's one of the most rewarding experiences uh, I've ever had on a mission team. And it doesn't take any skill. You don't need a lot of preparation to simply put on a pair of shoes onto a child's feet. So, Jeff, well, thank you for uh, digging into this uh, scripture uh, with me today. And uh, uh, maybe we can have you on as a guest uh, again in the future. So maybe, if I'm not run off. Thanks for having <laughs> me, though. All righty. Well, thanks, everyone. And uh, we will see you in the mission field.